In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use dynamic mesh actors in Unreal Engine 5.0's modeling mode. So by default, if I do something like create a new box primitive or jump into the poly extrude tool and do a bit of uh, sort of basic level blockout, you're going to see that as I'm drawing in the viewport, new assets appear uh, in the content browser because each time I do something, I'm creating a new static mesh asset. Uh, and that, you know, can be a little bit uh, undesired if you, you know, ultimately don't want these to be separate assets. It also has some properties, like if I sort of alt drag in the viewport to make a duplicate, uh, that duplicate is actually just an instance. So if I, you know, go and edit this one, it's going to also edit the other one because they're both instances of the same asset. And you can always right click on one and go browse to asset and see that it's this asset down here in the content browser. So, um... Another alternative that we added in Unreal Engine 5.0 is to use dynamic mesh actors. Now these are not enabled by default, so you have to go into the project settings and scroll down to plugins and select modeling mode and say, and check this box, enable dynamic mesh actors. So once you've done that, if you leave modeling mode and go back into it, uh, you only have to do that once and then it'll be there every time. Now when I go to make a new box primitive, I've got another option under output type. In addition to static mesh and volume, I can make a dynamic mesh. So when I make a dynamic mesh, you see that nothing appears in the content browser. I can you know, place a bunch of them, and it's not making new assets. It's because a dynamic mesh actor lives, uh, we say it lives in the level. So there's no asset associated with this mesh. When you save the level, it will save that mesh with the level file. So if I go and do the same kind of, you know, bit of block out, you'll see that, again, no assets are being created. Uh, so that is, um, uh, can be a more efficient workflow if you want to, if these are sort of temporary or you want to do sort of things like quickly making a copy, right? If I go and edit this one, it's not going to modify the other one because these are duplicates when I when I drag the mesh, when I alt drag to make a copy or use any other duplicating in the viewport, uh, it's a fully separate mesh. So there's some other nice properties of dynamic mesh actors because of this not having an associated asset file. So if I, for instance, want to work on these as a group, I can uh, shift select them all and use the mesh merge tool. So if I um, the default here output type is from input. So it's going to look at these and say these are all dynamic mesh actors, make a new dynamic mesh actor. You know, it could make a new static mesh, then it'll make a new asset. But if I leave it as from input or use dynamic mesh, then when I combine them, again, I didn't get a new asset, but now they're all uh, sort of joined together and I can go in and, you know, maybe use polydeform tool to work on them a little bit uh, together. And I could also do things like uh, drag out a copy and work on this copy, right? They're not linked or anything like that. Uh, and then it, later, if I want to, you know, get them back into pieces, I can go down to the transform tools and use the split tool. And now they're back as separate, separate pieces in the outliner. But at no point did I make some new assets. So this is a, a really can be a really efficient way to work um, when you're not ready yet to sort of build out full assets. Dynamic mesh actors aren't as efficient as static mesh actors in rendering. Uh, they're not as efficient in memory usage. They don't support Nanite or Lumen. So there's lots of reasons you might want to use real static meshes in your game, but you can cook a uh, build with dynamic mesh actors and they do support uh, complex and simple collision. And you can press play and use them uh, in Pi and all those sorts of normal things. So one other thing we can do, I'm just going to combine these back together, uh, is we could use the convert tool when we're done. And we won't say like, I'd like this to be a static mesh asset. Now we can use the convert tool set the output type to static mesh um, and hit accept. And now we've got an asset version of those dynamic meshes, right? Uh, so it's the same mesh, but it's an asset now. So there's another reason you might uh, want to use dynamic mesh actors during editing in addition to this sort of building up levels and things like that. So here's a static mesh uh, high resolution asset. This is actually not too high. It's only 500,000 triangles, um, which, you know, is still a lot. Uh, but when we do stuff on this, like say we do a bit of sculpting, this is just random sculpting, and we click accept, we're going to get this pop-up waiting for static meshes to be ready. And that will take longer and longer the more triangles you have. If this is a 5 million triangle mesh, 
if nanite and lumen are enabled, they're disabled right now in this level, that can take quite a long time, that build step. And uh, it can be, uh, you know, kind of painful to use things like sculpting and other editing tools in that context uh, when you have to wait for that build after every tool operation. So what we can do is we can use the convert, or we'll, here what we'll do is we'll drag out a copy. Uh, we can either use the mesh dupe tool to make a duplicate that's a dynamic mesh, or we can use just make a, drag out a copy of the asset instance and use the convert tool. We'll convert that to a dynamic mesh. And so that'll take a second, basically similar to the amount of time it takes to do that mesh build. But now when we do things like sculpting, it will start, the tool will work the same way, but it will start up and shut down quicker. So there's no build step. So everything happens more quickly and significantly more quickly as the mesh gets bigger. Uh, and then, so we can make a sort of temporary copy for editing. Now, how do we get that back to the static mesh? You could make a new asset using what I showed before, but we also have a tool called transfer. So I select this mesh and then shift select the original and I can do transfer. Uh, and I can actually use this to transfer to different LODs. If you had multiple LODs, that's a way to do LOD editing, just to mention. But, um, and that's a good LOD workflow is you can, you can essentially transfer out uh, LOD, edit it and transfer it back in. But here I'm just gonna transfer this edited version back to the original mesh. So it's gonna have to do a build again, right? Because we're updating the static mesh asset. And there we go. Uh, so uh, those are some of the ways you can use dynamic mesh actors in your modeling workflows uh, to sort of be more efficient and minimize the sort of asset management while you're modeling. Okay, thanks for watching.